Good morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is Bella. And I'm Autumn, and this is the Gospel Team. Hello, nice to meet you. If you're willing and able, would you please stand to your feet with us today? All right, let's get ready to worship the Lord.
sing it to him. No one, no one can worship you for me.
Jesus, thank you so much for this time of worship, and let us not take for granted that we are in a place, a community, that we are able to freely worship you. Um, I want to thank you for this first week of school that we've had, and for any anxiety we've had, or whether it was fun or scary or exciting, I just want to give it all to you, God, and I pray over any anxiety or fear that we've had, and let us know that it's not from you, and I just lift it all up to you, God. Thank you for every trial that you've already brought us through and every one that you're going to bring us through this year. We love you, Jesus, and in your name we sin. Amen. Hey, everybody. I'm Rebecca. I'm Karen. And today we are going out into our lovely local community to touch base with some of our incredible local businesses to get them excited for a taste of Azusa. I love this city and I love to eat all of the food in this city. So Rebecca, I have a question for you. What's the question? Do you want a taste of Azusa? Oh, I want a taste of Azusa. Let's, Let's go. go. Hey, I'm here at Cafe Bungalow just across the street from APU. And if you stop here, get the popcorn chicken and always pop in for a boba. Bungalow for the win. Hey, I'm outside True Bowl right now in the Stater Brothers parking lot. We're gonna go inside, grab ourselves, I don't know, maybe a delicious acai bowl. Come on, let's go. <laughs>
Welcome to Osu Canela. We have we featured the best cafe de olla in Osusa. Pepe's is one of my favorite places in Azusa. The tacos are so good. Let's get out of the heat and go into nectar. Perfect for a hot summer day. Hey, I'm in downtown Azusa, right across the street from Cafe Cultura. I always recommend chilequiles. But just know that they're only open for breakfast and lunch, so come early and there's always a line out the door because it's that good. Hey, this is Keith's Kettle Corn. They have like 35 different flavors of popcorn. Our family's personal favorite is the cookies and cream, but they, they have like traditional kettle corn, they have like pistachio flavored, they have so many. So when you have a hankering for popcorn, as we always do, come to Keith's. Okay, we're here at Preston Flower. We've got actually some APU students here with us. Would you tell us your name and what you're drinking today? Yes, I'm Natalie and I got a brown sugar cinnamon latte. Mmm, sounds delicious. I'm Lauren and I got an iced matcha. Mmm. I'm getting garden. You can really taste the petals. Thanks so much for joining us on this tour of Azusa. We totally ate our way through the city and had so much fun, right? It was right? amazing. I loved it. It was so good. And you know what? As part of our Love Local Week here on campus, instead of you having a traits about the city like we just did, we're actually going to bring all of these businesses That's right. straight to you. That's right. Join us for a taste of Azusa out on Kugwak September 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. You do not want to miss this event. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's going to be delicious. Bye. Here's a little secret. First 100 students there will get a free taco from Pepe's Taco. So come on out. We have free donut holes from Bumblebee Donuts. Uh, I'm going to be raffling off all kinds of fun prizes like lunch with Karen, lunch with Koba. Come on. You might even get like, I don't know, a coffee with, uh, with Julie. <laughs> coffee with Pastor T. All right. We're also gonna be raffling off a bunch of other great uh, gift cards and giving away merch like this awesome hat designed by Ruthie Bolton. This shirt designed by Ruthie Bolton, come on. So you don't wanna miss it, come on out. This is gonna be an incredible opportunity for all of us to learn about how we can actually fulfill your service requirement, meet our community partners, get to know them, find something that sparks passion in your heart so that you can give back to the local community. Sound good? All right. Oh, and we also have local folklorico dancers coming. So please come on out. It's going to be incredible. And now it is my absolute honor and my pleasure to introduce to you a very special guest this morning who will lead us in a word of prayer before we get into the message. All right. Nathan Nunez is an APU alum, 2022 kinesiology. Give it up, kines. Right. And he is also a Gabrieleno cultural keeper, indigenous to the San Gabriel Mountains. So what better way to celebrate Love Local Week than by honoring and celebrating uh, our, the original inhabitants of our local community, right? Come on, let's give it up. Let's celebrate and let's honor the original inhabitants of this land. And so, Nathan, would you come on up and lead us in a word of prayer? Thank you for being here. Well, good morning, everyone. You know, I'll be honest, when I was a student here, I didn't think I'd be up here speaking in front of chapel. Uh, that's a first for me, and I'm very honored and blessed to be here with you all and just be able to share 
a little about my culture, but also to just the uh, significance of this week. And I appreciate you, your openness to be here with me today. Miha non ne hapchigna susagna gabrileno netwayane kawa havavit awishkonaha. That's my traditional language that I just shared with you. Miha means greetings or hello. Noone Habchigna Susagna Gabrileno means I am from the villages of Habchigna, which is located in the San Gabriel Mountains, and also the village of Asusagna. Azusa, Asuksa, that's where the name came from. Asusagna means the village or place of his grandmother. That's the story behind the name Azusa. And then when I said, Nonim Kawahava Beats, I'm saying there, my native name is Great Runner. And I always joke that I got that name because uh, when I was younger, I ran track a lot. And I always was one stealing bases during the baseball games. Us natives people sometimes get names that are very simple like that. And Wishkonaha uh, meaning my heart is warm and happy to be here with you today. You know, the native people that have been in these lands all across from the high desert to here in LA County, to out there towards Malibu, all the way to out there towards uh, San Bernardino. Many, many different cultures, hundreds of villages all over the place with their own different cultures that are unique to them. The coastal people had a culture that was unique to the coastal people, maritime culture. The people that I'm descendants from were mountain people. We lived in the mountains. We breathed the mountains. We protected, we stewarded those mountains. That work still continues with me today. And the beautiful, beautiful part about it is that I started an organization here at APU when I was a freshman, sophomore here called the Canyon City Environmental Project. That work still continues today, and it shows the beauty the beauty of that cultural connection, but also of you being a student here and what you can accomplish. Like I said, I don't think I would have imagined myself to be up here speaking in front of you today, or even had the confidence to do so, to be able to articulate and be comfortable with what I'm saying. But I appreciate you all, and I want to leave you with a little blessing in our language that, for us, took a lot of work to revitalize and bring back. We have a long story, complicated story, I'm willing to talk more with you about it. I hope to come back and share more with you about that story and engage with you in that storytelling aspect of our culture that's very important. Motampo wishkoha, tehof kopoha, wishkonaha. What I said there is many blessings to you and may those blessings follow you. I hope during this week you really deep deep into that local engagement, look into the history of the city, but also to just the cultures around you, the beauty of the city and what it has to bring to the table. Thank you again for listening to me, being part of this story with me, and I look forward to seeing you back in the near future. Thank you all. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, well, good morning, and welcome to Chapel. How y'all doing? Week two. Well, as you have heard, this morning's chapel kicks off something brand new and super fun that we're doing this week called Love Local Week. We want you, while you are a student here, to develop a love for this city and the San Gabriel Valley, which you are now a resident of. So welcome to the San Gabriel Valley. Welcome to Azusa. <laughs> Tonight, as you heard um, and saw, as Rebecca and I ate our way through the city, is Taste of Azusa. We've got lots of community partners coming to campus to get you engaged with local service. My favorite taco place will be here, Pepe's, as you also said. Um, tomorrow night will actually be our first response chapel of the year. And we are, yes, response chapel. And we are continuing in our theme of loving our local community by hosting some local church pastors for dinner actually prior to chapel. And then our, all of us will go up to chapel together where we will have an entire chapel that is focused on praying um, and loving our local community. Our superintendent of our school district is gonna be here, our mayor will be here, our local police chief will be here. We are gonna be spending time in prayer over our city. We feel called to continue the work that God has started and done in this city by covering it all in prayer. So we're gonna do that tomorrow night, okay? Friday, Friday is a big deal as well. Friday is our church fair. Give it up for the local church. Yes. We actually have 20 different local churches that will be coming to campus on Friday to tell you all about what they offer. And let me, let me tell you this. 
chapel and the spiritual formation that we offer you on this campus is really good. It is awesome. It is fantastic. But it is not a replacement for the local church. It is not a replacement or a substitute for what God is doing in the church. We hope and we pray and expect that you are getting plugged into a local church while you are here, where you are surrounded by people who are not just college students, right? As a local church pastor myself, I urge you to be connected to people outside of this campus. Our churches need you and you need our churches. So... About 20 different churches are going to be here to provide you info on their church community. Hear me also say this. There's going to be all of these different churches here, but we are all one big church. This is not a competition for who is going to have the best swag on Friday to get you connected to their space, right? We are all different and beautiful reflections of the larger church. And it is the church that is God's plan A for advancing the work of God in this world. It's the church. It's the United Bride of Christ. Okay, so in chapel on Friday, we're going to have a good friend of mine, someone that I've known for nearly 20 years. He is also an Azusa native and a local church pastor come and speak to us. So lots of exciting things coming. We want you to be aware of everything that God is already doing in this community. So we've got a lot. We've got nonprofits, businesses, schools, city councils, all of that. All of this matters to me. All of this matters to me. I am an Azusa resident myself, okay? While I did not grow up in this city, I have lived in Azusa and the surrounding communities and cities since 2001 when I came here to attend this school. That's 22 years that I have been engaged in this community. I found Azusa Pacific University my sophomore year of high school when a person in my youth group that I really, really look up to, she came here. She was a transfer from another school in Colorado, and after her first semester here at APU, she raved about it. She wouldn't stop talking about how amazing it was. So when it was time for me to do my college tours, I knew that APU had to be on the list. So I want to show you the first picture that I ever took of APU, okay? It's going to come up on the screen in just a second. The first picture that I ever took of APU, this is from, this picture is going to be from my junior and senior year scrapbook, okay? Look at this. This is gold, you all. This is gold. Can we have a moment to appreciate my scrapbooking skills, please? Thank you. Look at that. Okay, so my church growing up used to have a monthly scrapbook night as a way to get people connected. And let me tell you, if any of these churches on Friday have a scrapbook like situation, sign up there because that's where you get the tea on the church. Okay, that's where you get the tea on what's going on in the local church. Okay, but look at this page. Go back, go back, put it back up again. It's too good. We have to look at it again. Okay, so I actually went back and looked for this when I was preparing for this sermon. And as I took all of these photos, as I looked at these photos in Azusa, I had no idea what God had in store for me, okay? So obviously there's the tiny pic on the right, like, see that? It says APU, look at us, yay, okay? But the picture in the upper left-hand corner, it's hard to see, that is actually driving up Azusa Avenue, Okay, here in the city. It's the one-way street that goes up towards the canyon. I actually live now on the other side of this street, the one-way street that comes down out of the canyon. And this is a picture I took when I was like 17 years old. I drive by this every single day, and I had no idea until I looked it up just recently. Okay, that little pic in the upper middle, it says downtown Long Beach. It's not technically, I didn't really know my geography when I was in high school down here. That's the Queen Mary. Okay, that picture is the Queen Mary. That's where uh, there was a boy that I met here at APU and we started dating. And at APU, he would ask me to be his girlfriend in March on that boat. And then the next year he'd ask me to marry him. And then next month, 18 years of marriage and he's sitting right over there. Hearts. 
So I had no idea, I had no idea that God was doing a new thing when he moved me here. I took these photos when I was 17, right? I had no idea the ways that this university, this city, and so much more would captivate me, would give me a sense of belonging, would give me a sense of home, and absolutely, Azusa is my home. And so I want to tell you a few facts about Azusa and brag on my city for a bit. The city of Azusa was founded in 1887 and incorporated in 1898. That's just one year before this university was founded in Whittier, just a few miles away from here. Now, APU didn't start here in the city of Azusa. We moved to this location not until 1948. But let me tell you this, Azusa was a hop in place before APU ever got here. The first recorded reference to Azusa was found in the di diary of Father Juan Crespi in 1769 as he traveled, thank you, as he traveled from San Diego trying to get to Monterey Bay. In his diary, he talked about the Gabrilano people, which you just heard Nathan talk about as well. They were here before Azusa was inhabited by white immigrants and homesteaders. The community of the Gabrilano people called this place Asusagna, which you just heard, which is where our city gets its name. Now, if you hearken back to your U.S. history classes, either here or in high school, you'll remember that California was originally part of Mexico, right? Not just California, but lots of other states as well. Before our city, Azusa, was founded and incorporated, there was tons and tons of Mexican citizens here as part of the Mexican land grant when Azusa was still a part of Mexico before the American invasion of Mexico in a land grab, right? Just a few years after California became one of the United States through the Mexican-American War ending in 1848, Azusa was a very popular town. Part of the reason for that is that gold was discovered in our hills, the hills just behind us. In 1854, in the span of 20 years, from 1854, 20 years forward, they estimate that about $12 million of gold was mined in our canyons. That's why we're the Canyon City. I see you clapping for that gold, thank you. As people began to settle here, they knew that they needed to do something for the kids. And so they established a school for local children. The first school in Azusa was made of logs and brush. And it was the first public school in the upper San Gabriel Valley. See, Azusa has a very long history of education and prioritizing education for its community. Fun fact. I realized, or I recently just learned, that as after Azusa was established, after that school was established here in the city, Henry Dalton, there is a, a lot of different schools and streets named after Henry Dalton here in Azusa. He was an immigrant from England. He imported 15 stands of Italian honeybees, and that was considered the first bees ever imported into the United States. That's our claim to fame. We have bees. We started it. Okay, yes, save the bees. In 1890, yes, in 1890, by the time we were incorporated in this city, the population of Azusa was, get this, 800 people. 800 people, whoa. Te thank you. And 10 years later, in 1899, which that number should sound familiar to you, we grew by a whopping 65 people to now have a population of 1865, or 865, I'm sorry. But in our last census, census in 2020, Azusa recorded right around 50,000 people. 50,000 people. Azusa is just under 10 miles of land that makes up neighborhoods, schools, restaurants, parks, canyons, waterfalls, and so much more. So why do I tell you all of this? First, to help you understand that Azusa is a real place outside of the university that bears its name. People live here. 50,000 plus people call this city home. 
Most of the people that live here are generational residents, meaning they live here, and their parents lived here, and their grandparents lived here. Azusa's blood runs deep. But it's not just the university that embodies the name Azusa. It's me and my neighbors. And now that you are a student at Azusa Pacific University, it's you and your neighbors. When I moved here 22 years ago, I had no idea that this small town nestled in the base of the San Gabriel Mountains at the entrance to this canyon would become the home of me and my family. I've lived here longer than the home I left to come to APU. My deep appreciation for this community started with me knowing my community. It started with me being involved in my community by serving in my community, spending time in my community, spending my hard-earned money in my community. And that knowing my community turned into a deep, deep loving of my community. Azusa is a place that isn't just bound by Chick-fil-A and the Citrus Crossing across from East Campus. There's so much more to this city. The other reason I'm telling you this is because it is a lot easier to otherize someone or something that you don't know. When we don't know things that are different from our lived experience, it then becomes very easy to put that outside of our bubble. It allows us to keep a safe distance from whatever that is and who I am. And outside of the 20 or so Azusa scholars and myself who live here, who are in this room right now, it's easy for you to look at Azusa and our residents as others, people who live differently than you. Maybe if you didn't grow up in a predominantly Latino or Latina community, people who speak different languages than you or eat different food than you. Hear me say this, different is not bad. It's just different. So how do we understand things and people that are different than us? We get to know them. We jump in with both feet. I want you to know Azusa. It's going to be your home for however long you're here. So in order to love the local community, you have to know it. You have to know it. This concept became really highlighted for me when I think about the relationship between the Jewish people and the Samaritan people. See, the Samaritans and the Jews were from the same place. They were from the same place, from the same people group. They were all considered the children of Israel. And then in 1 Kings, we read about Israel, the place where all of the Jews and the Samaritans lived together in harmony, being divided in half, becoming in essence two kingdoms, one kingdom, Judah had Jerusalem and the temple, and the other half had the hill of Samaria. They controlled a main passageway between Jerusalem and Galilee. And then in 722 BC, before Jesus ever entered on the scene, Samaria and that hill, it was overtaken by the Assyrians. All of the inhabitants who lived on that hill had been renamed Samaritans because of where they lived. They were taken into captivity and sold into slavery. They had no choice but to intermingle with the Assyrians and the Mesopotamians. And the Samaritans eventually learned to live alongside these people, the Assyrians and the Mesopotamians, to form one people group. But here's the funny thing. It's not all that different from the story of the Jews because eventually the Jews, because of their disobedience, they were captured too by Babylon. And for them to survive, they also had to intermingle with the Babylonian Empire. So when the Israelites returned to their land after captivity, the Samaritans who were already there were ready to welcome them with open arms and they said, welcome back. And the Israelites said, no thank you. No thank you. Because the Israelite exiles, they despised Samaritans. They said they were renegades. You left first. You had to intermingle first. The Israelite exiles hated the Samaritans. 
One ancient writer, Josephus, routinely referred to the Samaritans as evil and enviously disposed to the Jews. When the Samaritans offered to help rebuild the temple, this, the Israelites and the Jews said, no thanks, we don't want your help. And so over the next hundred and hundred and hundreds of years, the walls of bitterness just began to grow and grow where the other groups were demonizing one another. So imagine their surprise when the ragtag prophet comes on the scene, named Jesus, a lowly carpenter's son, and begins teaching in the temple, and he says things like this. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. Jesus told the story of a good Samaritan, and who's the hero of that story? The Samaritan. Because Jews didn't even want to go near Samaria. And if you've grown up in the church, you know that Jesus telling the story of the Samaritan who went out of his way to help is radically different than the Jews who went out of their way to avoid the Samaritans. In fact, Luke, nearly 10 chapters in the book of Luke are devoted to Jesus walking, teaching, preaching, healing throughout Samaria. Luke goes out of his way to document all of the times that Jesus prioritized the people of Samaria because Jesus knew that Samaria was a real place outside of his hometown where people lived and worked and inhabited their city. Jesus spent time teaching, moving, settling, and Jesus loved the Samaritans because he knew them. As we close, I want us to look at this critical passage in Acts that deals with the Samaritan people. It says, and I'm going to read fast, so buckle up. Now those who were scattered went from place to place proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds with one accord listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in the city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Those, the two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as the Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Spirit. Now after Peter and John had testified, spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. Philip brings the community of Samaria the good news, and they are ready to hear it. They receive it with great joy. Why is this passage significant? Among other things, Luke isn't writing this just to offer what it looks like to be a Christian. When the gospel is ready to leave the place that it started, where does it go? The neighborhood. It goes to the neighbor. It moved outside of Jerusalem and went to Samaria. And the gospel was ready. It spread like wildfire. You know why? Because Jesus knew those people and those people knew Jesus. They knew him and so they were ready to receive that he was in fact the Messiah because he went out of his way to show them. He went out of his way to show them. We live in a world that is still deeply shaped by this animosity. Now, I'm not saying that Azusans are Samaritans. What I am saying is we're not that different from one another. We would do better to get to know Azusa rather than work really, really hard at keeping Azusans, which is me and you, at a distance. I had no idea what God was doing in this community when I first came here. But as I look back on all that God did, it reminded me of the faithfulness of God. Let me tell you, you know that moment when you see your elementary school teacher at the grocery store and it like really weirds you out and you're like, what do I do with that, right? You'll see me at the grocery store. You'll see me at Preston Flower having coffee. You'll see my family skating at the skate park in Memorial Park. You'll see my kids in the local Cub Scout pack, even as they put up flags at City Hall this weekend, because it's my City Hall. 
I am so firmly planted and committed to the work of God in this city. I need you to know it. Know what makes us us. Don't just go to Mantra and Target and pretend that's enough. Be fully here. Serve in the local community because the best way to get to know a place is to walk through a place is to do what Jesus did, live all up in Azusa. Don't avoid it, don't walk the other way, because when the gospel is ready to be shared, it will blow through the city like wildfire. May it be so in this city, may it be so in my city. Thank you, you're dismissed. <laughs>